Hey guys, today we're covering price floors. A bit of a review before we get started on that. You'll remember last time we covered price ceilings. Those are put in place by the government on the theory that the price equilibrium, the naturally occurring price for a product, is too expensive for consumers to afford. Therefore, the price ceiling becomes an upper limit on how high a price may rise. The highest a price will ever naturally rise is the equilibrium. Therefore, the price ceiling assumes the equilibrium is too high and sets below that. Since the price ceiling is below the equilibrium, it causes a shortage. Today, we're going to look at kind of the opposite, a price floor. A price floor is the lowest a price may fall. So, it is a limit put in place by government on how low the price on something may go. Now, why would we do that? And the answer is this. Sometimes the theory is that this price equilibrium is so low that it's not profitable on something that is a necessity. If that's the case, businesses aren't going to profit. If the lowest the price will ever naturally fall is too low for them to profit, they're simply going to stop producing an item. If it's a necessity, if it's something we need, that's bad because then we just won't have the item because they're not making it. So in order to protect producers and make sure they stay in business to produce something that we need, the price floor is put in place. Now, if the lowest the price will ever naturally fall will be the price equilibrium, then we need to set the price floor above that because our concern is that this equilibrium is too low. So again, just like with the price ceiling, note what happens. If the price equilibrium here is originally $3 and we set the price floor at four, we end up with a quantity supplied that is way over here, and we end up with a quantity demanded that is back here. People are demanding a lower quality than is available. What do we call that? A surplus. So, what ends up happening with the price floor is it becomes inefficient because it creates a surplus of products. The theory on the part of the government is that the surplus, despite being inefficient, is acceptable because it's better than the alternative of not having a necessity. The last time we put this in place on a large scale was during the Great Depression. During the Great Depression, we had deflation. Prices were falling. People weren't buying things because they really didn't have money. And so farmers were actually destroying food because they weren't profiting off it. So government guaranteed farmers certain prices for their farm products so that people had enough food to eat. It's very rare that we need to put price floors in place. But if we do, just like a price ceiling, they tend to be inefficient and cause surpluses. So, like a price ceiling, if we are going to do a price floor at all, it needs to be only in the short term. These policies cannot exist long term because they just create long term efficiencies if they do. And if possible, we try to avoid them at all. So, tomorrow, you guys will be able to ask me any questions via email that you have on price floors, price ceilings, and the price equilibrium. Wednesday, posted all day on Schoology. There will be an assessment. I'll be emailing you more details about that. It will cover chapter six, as well as some review of four and five, which is supply and demand. And then we'll move on to chapter seven later in the week. As always, please contact me with questions on any of this and stay safe.